Hello, XF Awkward here, and I'm going to be shoving a lot of information into a very small time frame, so let's get started. One, supports can carry a game, all right? The big mindset I see a lot is that I, I can't carry it from support because I have to hope that my team does well, and that just means I can't do anything. That's strictly not true. Let's stop and think about all the pro players out there and why they're pro players, right? They've got the knowledge that they need, and they've got the skill that they need, right? And that is not an exception whatsoever for support uh, players what, at all, if you think about Special, you think about Lemonation, you think about anyone that's really, really good, they're able to get back up the Diamond 1 or Challenger consistently because they know what they're doing, right? And if you're not winning your game in any role, uh, you need to improve as a player, right? If you're not winning consistently, you need to improve, right? So let's look at it from a support standpoint. Like, why am I not carrying from support, right? Let's ask you a couple of questions. Are you engaging properly uh, or at the right times? Or are you harassing at the right times? If you're playing Leona and you jump on top of the enemy AD carry and both you and your AD carry die, it's probably a good chance that you screwed up somewhere, right? You didn't analyze the situation properly and find the best way to create a situation where you have a favorable outcome. And you need to change that in the future. Uh, if you're playing a very pokey champion like Zyra or uh, Lulu or something like that that's got a lot of good harass, and you're not capitalizing whatsoever on it, then you're missing out on opportunities where you can gain advantages for your team. Um, Next question: Are you prepared for the matchup whatsoever? If you're playing a very, ta if you're playing a tanky champion like Alistar, uh, but you have no like tank runes whatsoever, and you're getting harassed very, very hard lane, you get beat down because you're not prepared for it, then you're virtually useless. You're not able to do what you need to do in lane to be effective, right? Uh, so you need to prepare for these matchups specifically if you want to become a very, very good support player. Um, if, let's, let's talk about champion selection. We're talking about picking the champion. Uh, if you pick a champion to try to win the lane, you need to play based on that decision, right? Or if you pick a champion for later on in the game because of the synergy with your team or something like that, then you need to play based on that decision, right? If you play... If you play um, do, 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 Alistar, so you can wombo combo with Yasuo, right? You don't want to be going super, super ham in your lane uh, to the point to where you can't even make it to mid-game to do this stuff. However, if you play a, a very harass-based champion to try to just dominate your lane... Um, then you need to play like that too, right? You need to go into each game with a plan and know what's going to work out and why it's going to work out. So how do we discover this? This is where you actually start studying all the champions that you're going to be dealing with on the lane. You need to know the power spikes of your team and you need to know the power spikes of your enemies, right? If you're playing Leona and your level 2 is very, very strong against some matchups, there's going to be other matchups where it's not very strong, right? Yes, Leona can jump on top of Thresh and Zyra and Lulu... Uh, level two very very well, but if she jumps on top of um, if she jumps on top of Alistar level two, he's going to headbutt her right back in the tower and just laugh and all chat. And you don't want that happening to you too. So you need to be looking at the power spikes of your team and your enemies, analyzing that, and try to figuring out what you can do to improve. Uh, if there's one thing I can try to teach you guys in this entire video, don't sit around when you're playing support. You don't just sit there, you don't ward the bush and then watch your AD Harry see us. It's an interactive and active lane where you need to know what you need to be doing at all times. There's always something that you can be doing, okay? Um, let's talk about decision making as a support. This is a, probably one of the biggest things in League of Legends is making good decisions, right? You need to know when you can be aggressive and when you need to be defensive, right? If you are on a power spike where you're very, very strong, then you want to capitalize on it. You want to be making plays that are going to benefit you and your team when it's safe to do so. However, if the enemy team is definitely stronger than you, say they hit level 6 before you do, and then they're looking to try to engage on that, you need to play defensively. You need to not let them capitalize on these situations that they want to, because doing so is going to mean death for your team. Speaking about death for your team, uh, say the AD carry gets caught out by an anti-level 6 stun. Um, and he gets completely demolished, and then you try to jump in and save him, and you die. I see this a lot. People would be like, my AD carriers are so bad, they always get caught, and then I end up dying too. Why did you end up dying, right? You saw him make a terrible, terrible mistake, and then you made the situation worse by not acting accordingly. Uh, in these situations, you want to protect your AD carry as best you can, but if they're screwed, you don't want to make the situation worse, okay? 
When we talk about supports, we're always talking about warding, so let's go into that. Warding does not stop at the end of laning phase, my friends. It goes out through the entire game, right? If you're playing support and you're winning lane all the time, but you can't seem to win the game, it's probably because you're not warding properly, or you're not doing something right in the mid to late game to make these games end. Um, this is kind of how a support gains the advantage for his team outside of landing phase, right? They go into the enemy jungle and they start warding very, very good positions to see where people are walking through to try to catch them so they can get objectives for free like Dragon or they can steal their buffs like blue buffers, steal their camps. But in addition to that, warding the enemy jungle makes it to where you can push the lanes without having to worry about getting ganked. This means that you can take more towers and you can get closer to their nexus and that's what you want to be doing. Um, at the same time, warding is kind of a good way to get your team back into a game when you're from when you're playing from behind, right? When you're pushed up into your base and you've got wards in your jungle, you can look to try to catch somebody that's walking in between lanes and then kill them. And you can force 4v5 fights. Or you can safely farm your jungle or walk between without having to worry about getting caught because you're able to see when the enemy's coming your way. Um, Warding is just extremely important, and it's very, very important to be putting wards in places where it's going to be beneficial to you. You don't want to be putting a ward somewhere in the enemy jungle when you're completely pressed up to your towers, right? If you're on your inhibitor and you notice that they're red buff spawned, woo, that's awesome, great information. doesn't really help you in this situation whatsoever, now does it? It's much better to put a ward over the wall or something like that and look to try to engage on somebody that's mispositioned or something like that. Um, Let's talk about engaging and disengaging, or more importantly, team fighting as a support, right? You need to know when you can engage and when it's going to be a good idea. If, you, if you're playing Thresh and you hook onto somebody and you pull yourself in, and then your team gets completely annihilated, you probably didn't make a good decision, now did you? Um, you need to analyze the situation to decide what's going to be the best way for you to force a fight for your team. Or if there's no way that you're going to win a fight, you need to be doing your best to try to disengage fights uh, until you can find a favorable outcome. Right? Um, champions that are very, very good at disengage are things like Zyra and Janna. Uh, Thresh, is, Thresh is pretty good at it as well. Um, but everyone can try to find a way to stop a fight from happening, whether you're just back pinging or something like that. Uh, but the, the thing is, you need to be looking to try to play team fights that are going to be favorable for, for you and your team, right? In addition to that, um, probably the biggest mistake I see when supports are team fighting, when they're complaining about not carrying, is that they don't know when to peel for their carries, and they don't know when to dive or disrupt the enemies, right? If you spend 25 minutes trying to get your AD carry fed, and you get him like 20 kills, and then you end up diving the enemy backline and leaving him to fight on his own, what, why was, what did we even waste the first 25 minutes for if he's just going to get exploded in two seconds because you were not there to protect him? Um, but at the same time, if you are playing with, if your AD carry has like only a long sword or something like that, and you're using all your abilities to keep this guy alive, you're really wasting your time because he's not really providing a whole lot to your team. You want to be protecting either your AP carry or you want to be disrupting the enemy team as best you can and just kind of leave him to fend on his own because he's not going to bring a whole lot to your team, right? So you may be able to analyze all the team fight aspects and try to figure out what's the best way to win each individual fight. Um, but at the end of the day, it's all about just realizing that there's always a better way to play a team fight. There's always a better way to play a lane. There's always a better pick that can be made. Um, and you need to be looking for these things to try to improve, okay? And that's how you're going to get better, and that's how you're going to carry from support. Um, thank you guys for watching this vlog. Uh, hopefully it wasn't too fast for you. Uh, if you're interested, please check out the stream at twitch.tv slash xfawkward and my Facebook page at facebook.com slash xfawkward. Uh, thank you guys once again. I hope you enjoyed this. If you have any suggestions for another vlog, please let me know. Thank you.